Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech. We're going to review the BlackBerry Z10 on Verizon. This phone comes in at $199 with a two-year contract, and as you can see, it's complete revamp of the original BlackBerry, and it runs BlackBerry 10. This particular version, as you can see, has no keyboard and it's just a capacitive touchscreen. It's a 4.2 inch display that has a resolution of 1280 by 768. Let me wake it back up here. And it has a pixel density of 356 pixels per inch. So that means it's a little bit higher than that of the iPhone 5. So it makes text really clear and the display overall looks pretty nice. So let me show you next to an iPhone 5. Let me turn off the display here, turn off the display. So you can see it's a little bit bigger next to a Galaxy S3. Pretty similar in size, uh, but thinness wise, a little bit different. You can see it's, it's pretty thin overall, and it's really lightweight. This is pretty plasticky feeling. The screen feels nice, but the backs and the side feel a little bit plasticky. So in your hand, it's very similar to that of an iPhone, but a little bit bigger and has a nice rubbery grip on the back. So you're not going to drop it or, or uh, easily let it slip out of your hands, or at least I didn't. So internally, let me open it up here. We have a really nice fast processor. It's a 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 dual core processor, and it goes pretty well. It makes everything really nice and fast. It has two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, and then it has a micro SD slot that allows expansion up to an additional 32 gigabytes. So you've got plenty of storage. You have a nice removable battery. It's an 1800 milliamp hour battery that they say is good for 10 hours of talk time and 13 days of standby. Here's our SIM card slot. We have an eight megapixel camera on the back capable of recording 1080p video and pretty decent images and you can see or maybe you didn't see here we have some contacts for uh, NFC right here as well. You pop this back back on so easily enough and it's nice and thin. On the side here we have a micro HDMI and micro USB for charging and syncing. On this side we have our volume buttons and then we have a button in the middle to allow us to use voice uh, dictation. On the top we have a microphone, power sleep wake, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the bottom it uses this little slot here that you take the back off with as a speaker and also a microphone. So they're somewhere inside here and they work pretty well. And you can see I must have hit the power button and what's neat that to turn this off you have to hold this down and it starts to count down. You can restart or cancel and we'll cancel it. So BlackBerry 10 is completely different overall. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention on the front here, we have our speaker, and then we have a two megapixel 720p camera on the front. We can quickly access the camera from the front just by holding, and we've got the camera. And it takes a second for whatever reason, but it takes pretty good pictures, and it takes them pretty quickly. You can see there, we'll go back, and it opens up, and we can edit it, things like that, and for some reason, it kind of is slow. So you do find this throughout this operating system. Let me close it here. So what BlackBerry has done is kind of go into this gesture system or uh, style of use, and it works pretty good, but you do need to have a little bit of knowledge of how it works before you go ahead and use it. So you can see these are the typical apps it comes installed with. So we have Facebook and Twitter, BlackBerry Messenger, LinkedIn, scroll to the right we've got YouTube and box.net and Foursquare and so you have the majority of your apps you don't have a lot of other apps though these I installed I installed Angry Birds just to try something different and everything seems to run pretty fast here's where it gets a little bit different unlike some other phones we have a lot of gestures and this actually reminds me a lot of WebOS and in a good way so we have some gestures we can slide to the right and here's all our emails things like that can slide again and we've got more notifications so we've got blackberry messenger text messages emergency alerts and so on so you can do those and that's not real obvious but you'll find it if you keep scrolling and then we have the gesture down we've got some settings and there's a couple other gestures hidden within and one thing that kind of annoyed me at first see if we scroll down here and uh, we'll delete this so i can tap on this email and open it they set up an appointment for a vehicle I have. Don't remember that. I can go into this extra menu here. I can delete it. 
Uh, or I can go back, hit this menu, and kind of select things. It's a little bit tough to figure out at for, first. So you hit this, select more. I want to select a bunch, then we can delete it. So it's a couple extra steps that aren't necessarily obvious, but some of it's really intuitive as you get to use it. You kind of swipe through fast. And the reason I said it reminds me of WebOS is because if I open a browser here, it pops open like that. You can see I have Zolotech here. It's pretty fast, and we'll come back to that. If I swipe up from the bottom, below the screen, it goes back into this card. And that's where it reminds me of WebOS. Swipe to the right, let's open Blackberry World. And it opens, and you can see it's not super fast, but it's not slow either. Swipe up again and it keeps opening cards. Open Twitter, and we can close them out with this little X here. We can go back into the browser, and everything's pretty fast. You can see I'm scrolling through. I can play one of my videos from before, and it plays pretty well usually. There we are. So it's gonna play right in the browser. Hi everyone, this is Aaron from Zolotech. And, I... and, and it plays right here. And it's still playing, it just took a second to close. So uh, pretty interesting that it works uh, like that. It runs video just fine, uh, but it is a little bit glitchy here and there. And I find that throughout the experience. I really wanted to like this phone and I don't dislike it. I just am not sure that it's, it's uh, ready for anyone that wants to switch from say an iPhone or an Android phone or even Windows phone, because you're not going to find all the apps uh, you might want. And I mean that coming from Windows Phone as well. There's top 50 app games for the US. Uh, here's some categories. And oftentimes I'd go into categories and I'd be surprised how little games there actually were. Scroll to the bottom here and it will keep loading. And they do keep adding quite a few apps. Uh, but some of the things I searched for just weren't there. More on the money management side. Uh, games you'll generally find. You won't find things like Instagram. In fact, I typed it before and there's no Instagram. So generally the majority of things you want or a BlackBerry user might want are there, but not everything. The battery life I ended up getting uh, was about eight hours or so with regular use. I let it stand by for a while, then I'd use it. I'd let it pull my email like all my other phones I normally do. Uh, and it seemed to get through a full day, but definitely needed to charge later on. That part was a little bit lacking, unfortunately. Now that will depend on your cell phone signal as well, and mine was pretty good overall, three, four bars or so regularly where I was using it. So it's a little bit disappointing battery-wise, however, I could swap out the battery if I ran into that. Uh, that's probably the least of your worries as far as that goes. The apps are probably going to be the majority of people's concern. Overall, the camera's pretty good. Like I said, it took decent pictures. Uh, iPhone is still on top for that, even compared to the new Galaxy S4. It's still uh, considered to be on the top by the majority of people that review it. So uh, that's, that's just what it is, but it's not indecent at all. You'll, most people will like it and it'll be fine. Everything it does, it seems to do pretty well. And the keyboard is another thing that's talked about a lot. Let me open that up. If I open the keyboard, see I can compose a new tweet. Uh, we'll just say, uh, doing a review of the BlackBerry Z10. So you can see autocorrect worked pretty well. And as I was typing, it was, it was popping up suggestions. So let me just do that quick. Or actually you can see right here, it says 010. Let me see if you can see that up close. You can see it says 010. If I swipe up right there, it'll pop that right in. And you can do that as you're typing. It does take some time to get used to, but the keyboard overall is, is very, very good. And we'll tweet, and you can see it says tweet in progress, and it's sent. And I can keep this open. As you keep more tiles open, the more battery you'll use. So you wanna be careful about that. The last thing I wanted to show you is the search. We can hold this button on the side. We can hit search though. Hold this button. Search for local restaurants. It does a pretty good job of voice to text. So it searches for local restaurants, but if it's not in my address book, it doesn't show up. So I either need to have an application that will search, or I can go to maps and search that way. So the voice recognition overall is pretty good, but it's not quite as, I guess there as maybe Google Maps is. 
uh, integrated into a Galaxy S3 or something along those lines. The BlackBerry Z10 overall is really a pretty nice phone. But for those that want to maybe get away from an iPhone or an Android phone or a Windows phone, they may have a problem getting away from that. Most people that I talked to and I showed this phone to thought it was interesting, they liked what it did, but thought there wasn't enough apps and it was too little too late. I'm not really sure if that's the case or not because those coming from a regular BlackBerry to this will probably really like it. They do have another model coming out or it's just coming out that has a bottom keyboard as well and if you've got to have that physical keyboard you may really like it. But if you're coming from an iPhone or like I said an Android or Windows phone you'll probably end up going back or to one of the others just as most of those apps that you might use and the battery life just doesn't seem to be there at least for me as far as that part. So if you have any comments or questions about this phone, I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already to this channel, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.